I love metaphors for life, sailing a ship, running a country, and uh, one that seems to work really well is gardening, having a garden. There's so many ways in which that seems to capture a lot of what's going on with life. This idea of we have this space and it's somewhere in the middle between being purely nature and purely constructed. So if we have like, you could imagine a house that is a fully constructed environment where we, we have built everything ourselves. We've designed the walls and the floors and the rooms and it's fully constructed. Whereas, you know, if it's just like out in the forest, then that's something that, you know, we just, we found ourselves in. We didn't construct it at all. But a garden is in between. We have, it's, it, it's nature. It's something that's growing, not entirely in our control, but it's sort of shaped. We, we give it a shape and sort of encourage it to go in certain directions and not others. And that seems to fit the way that our life goes because we don't have total control. Now I do like, you know, build your life like a house. Yeah, I do like that. So you can go lots of different directions with these metaphors for life. Uh, so I like thinking of it as a house too. And that emphasizes the, the aspects of life that we can control. But a garden, building a garden is kind of like building a house, but it's not as fully a constructed environment. It's like a little piece of nature that is sort of walled off or, or, or separated from the environment, just like we are. We don't live fully integrated with nature. We like to separate things like having our shelter and clothing and uh, we like to have some systems that separate us from being a hundred percent, you know, simply living in the forest. But at the same time, we are still part of that natural system. We're not living in some, you know, imaginary spaceship or something. I mean, we are living in nature and we, we still are open to the sun and the rain, the weather, the seasons. Those things affect us just as they affect the natural world. So we work with them. And so a garden is a place where we can be in a, a built and tended environment but also still be in nature, in a sense, still open to the outdoors and to the natural elements. So we mix these things, not trying to control too much and, you know, turning it into like a, a box or something like, so, because we can't, we can't completely simply decide everything we want in life, you know, and exactly just like painting a painting, although that's another metaphor that is fun to use for, for, the, for certain aspects of life, uh, for the, the aspects that we can control, but we can shape it. So, I mean, for one thing, we have the edges of the garden. Try to keep those rascally rabbits uh, and the, you know, keep the raccoons out uh, and try to control access to the garden. We don't just let anything come in and eat our plants. We have to be careful about the, the edges of the garden and, and, and tend it against intruders. Just like we decide what we leave, we allow to enter our minds. And of course, the metaphor with weeds in the garden, we want certain things to grow and, and not others. And so as part of tending the garden, we remove the weeds that 
can be seen as certain thoughts, certain habits that are not leading to a very nice garden, uh, that are leading things in a direction we don't want, we can remove those weeds. And so working in our garden, this is how we can see working on ourselves. How do we see? What, what does your inner garden look like? Is it being overrun with raccoons? Is it overgrown with weeds? Or, you know, and what sort of, what sort of plants are growing there and what do you want to grow there? What do you want your garden to look like? And I think this can be a, an interesting way of looking at how we manage things. We can't simply design it out of nothing. It still has to be tied in with nature, but we can shape our nature and tend it to become what we want.